Close your eyes with me for a second. And think about the best meal you've ever had. Can you smell it? Taste it? Now, how would your answer or the thing you thought about, how would that change if the question wasn't, what's the best meal you've ever eaten, but instead is, what's the most memorable meal you've ever eaten? The meals that I remember are the meals that were shared with people. I remember nervously going to the Italian oven. Have you ever been to the Italian oven? It's a super classy Italian joint where you write on the tables and they give you noodles for straws, so you know it's classy. I remember going there with a really cute redhead (laughs) for the very first time and figuring out that she was engaging and strong and interesting and I knew I wanted to know more about her. And for the last 15 years, I've been trying to figure that out. (laughs) I remember sitting across the parsonage, sitting across the parking lot in the Windsor Parsonage on a really hot July day, eating pizza rolls with a couple little kids and wondering exactly what I got myself into. I remember a meal I had this week in the pavilion on a Wednesday night, Thursday night, it was pouring down rain. And I sat with Danny and Lily who had gotten off the bus, they needed to get home to Clay County They had never been to a place as big as Morgantown, and they were hungry. I was here with some college students and had some food, so I made them some plates, and we sat at those picnic tables, and I heard their stories, and God became present in our midst. There are these meals in our lives that we remember because of the people we've shared them with. Today, we're going to come to a pretty memorable meal, to a table that's been set for us, and we're going to gather with each other, and we're going to gather with people around the world who come together for the the same reason, to worship and glorify God. We're going to gather together with people from around the world, and we're going to tell stories of, of God's great work in our lives. We're going to celebrate the work that God has done We are going to experience welcome and fellowship like we've not known before. We're we're dining with the greatest host the world has ever known. And today he's polished the silver and set out the crystal and got out the fine china. And he's written your name on one of those little name card placards that sits at a table when it's real fancy so that you know that today you were welcomed Your presence here wasn't a surprise. You're not crashing a party you're you're not invited to. Your name has been written by the God who welcomes us to this table. Friends, this is indeed a memorable meal. A meal that allows us to remember, to come from all the places that we've lived and to bring with us all the stuff that we have and to be drawn together as God's people. A couple of years ago, I asked my kids, what do you think I do? They said that I um, tell people when to sing, I tell people to stand up and sit down, and then I hand out bread. Those are the three things I do. It's a pretty good job description. I like the fact that they told me or thought that part of my job was to hand out bread. Because when we come to this table, when I get to stand with, at, at this table and, and, and experience Christ's presence with you, man, that is a holy moment. And it's one of the greatest honors of my life to, to, to stand with you and to experience Christ who moves among us and who changes us and transforms us. I love to come to this table because it is a radical table. In the passage that that Bev read for us this morning, Paul writes these words, and they're words that you've heard and I've heard because we say them every time we come to the table. On the night that the Lord gave himself, we we say these words, you've heard them before. The part that I didn't have Bev read this morning was the part where uh, Paul uh, yells at the Corinthians. Man, he just breaks it down for them because because they they were getting together to eat, 
And, and they were just doing what's expected in their society. And so in their society, the tradition was that when, when people would gather at the table, that the rich and powerful would sit at the head, and then they, you'd go down and go down until you got to the poor and lowly, and they'd sit at the foot of the table. And so Paul writes to the Corinthians, and he says, I hear you're continuing to do this. You're continuing to, to, to allow the rich and powerful to eat first, and they go away full, and there's people that go away hungry. They go away, they go away drunk, and there's people who haven't had enough to drink. And Paul says, this is not how the table works. Because the table that we come to today, the table that we've been invited to today, is not a table that is separated by power or class or status. It is a table that puts us all on an even footing. It is a table that breaks down the things that divide us. Paul says to the people, this, this way of, of separating people into class and status isn't gonna work. You should be united around the table. Find a new way to do things. Break the cultural traditions that stand in place and find a new way to live. Paul invites us to do the same thing, to set aside the divisions that separate us from the other, to set aside the, the pursuit of power and prestige that we've lived for, the, the, the pursuit of privilege that continues to strike close. Paul, can, Paul invites us to come to a table that works in a radical way to break down the dividers, to break down the classes, to invite rich and poor to sit together and to be fed fully and completely, to experience justice. When we come to the table of the Lord, we get this taste, just this taste of what the kingdom of God's gonna look like when all are welcome and all are equal and all are invited. The table that we come to, as we come to the table, is a table that in many ways comforts the afflicted and it afflicts the comfortable. It invites us to move beyond ourselves to something else. This is a radical table where we meet the radical presence of Christ. 